Welcome to Hardcore Garage. This is Jeff. Today we're doing limo windows. We got here coming in my shit. It's my homie Jeff. What's going on? What's happening, man? Uh -oh. I can't even see you, like, it's just all black. What's happening, people? We are here in the garage about to tackle this cameo. There's one thing that we've been wanting to do for a long time, and then I got I got a helper. What's up? Mr. Uh, Double Mint Jeff back there. Uh, we are going to throw the limo window in this car, truck, cameo, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so let's do that. The thing that we're going to have to do is rip the interior out of this, and if you guys don't know how to do that, you can go back to the past videos and seen when we switched this interior to red not a whole lot to it i'll kind of talk us through it or maybe explain afterwards because it's just going to be two of us in there and really hard to video when we're doing this so one thing you should always do is try to make things easier now just changing a back window might not be that big of a deal but these are four-door blazer seats from as far as we can figure because they don't tilt <laughs> and it was going to be awful difficult so we just yanked them 15 millimeter bolts in and out pretty easy so, three Phillips head screws. One, two, three. Take out your seat belts, T50. And this one only had one screw, but usually there's two screws right here to get it out. And I don't, we did not have the hooks in, so we didn't have no screws up there. Now we are ready to yank that back window out. Oh yeah, easy. Yep. No big deal. All right, after playing around with this thing, hopefully we got her set up and ready to go. And we're, we're gonna tip, this is the first time. <laughs> not put the back panel back on it just because we lack confidence <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad that we took the seats out because we don't think we'd be able to do this with the seats in there either you want to get and try to get your corner started if, if that's how we're gonna oh wait um can we go straight down there we go. gotta put it that console <laughs> get your corner started if you can That's gonna be fun too when you can't see down your. How are we gonna? We have to put the bottom in first because you can't see under the seat, the bottom seal at all. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> the bottom has to be in first. I'm almost in. But you know what I'm saying? Usually, well, the bottom's sitting in right now. If you just pull well, mine in. ain't. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You're almost there, and now it's just gonna pop right in, especially with your you get those pencils or that uh, plate tool. You, you, you can't get to it. I'm saying under here. <laughs> well, no, but it's in. It just sat on the ledge. It, it's on. You think it's that far now? Yeah, oh, I know it's. Yeah, just, just start to squeeze your side in. It it's up. not nowhere near down low enough. Look, here's the line. Oh, I know, but once it slides in, it's because we're missing these edge pieces. I have to get my, my side in just a little bit more. Come look at my side and see where it's at. <laughs> we're just not in there. I got it. I got mine started here now, I think. Yeah, let me get that tool on that. Still not confident that bottom is on there, though. <laughs> I got fingernails. Well, I like, I like this little flat tool for the greenest root. Because I think I can get A rope there. would have been good on this, too. But I ain't never really had good luck with rope. I like a, I don't a know flat, what I... plastic harbor foot tool. Because then you can just use it like a paint spatula. Yeah, I'm halfway up my seal. Yeah, we're gonna do it your way pushing from this side. I can't get to a lot of it from the inside. Yeah. Wanna try this? I have another one similar to that in my truck. It's smaller. And yeah. then, you, like this, is that how you're doing it? Mm -hmm. And then just roll it up with your palm. Well, you can only get so far. Away. Yeah, I'm about the same height. I think if we drop one side, then we can get the top and bottom. Not nearly as easy as putting a factory in there. It's a lot of We already be done. I'm going to grab my keys. One of the most difficult parts about this 
was the win- the way the window sticks inside the cab. <clears throat> There's no way to get your fingers <clears throat> or a tool to grab the inside of the rubber and pull it to the inside like you would normally on a regular window install. So we are having to shove something from the outside to get that inner lip pushed into the metal. <laughs> and it was a serious pain. Honestly had about four hours in all this. We want to record this. Just in case dumb stuff happens. This is probably like the probably says in the instructions do not install it with the window down. Pretty bad, isn't it? It, is. <laughs> it surprised you. <laughs> <laughs> doing this on my DT. <laughs> That's why this never got put on. Right. No. He asked me, he because we talked about him buying it, and he's like, how much for you to put it in? I was like, I don't know. Won't you be able to do it. I don't want to do it. You know, we'd have to have 3M tape over everything. <laughs> right. Rip the interior half out of it again, no way. <laughs> Ain't risking messing that thing up. You got that little bone in here? I think we got it in there. There's nothing. Wire fell off. That's <laughs> really. <laughs> yep. That looks good. Nice. Okay, review. The fit is shit. The look is awesome. <laughs> That's true mini truck right there, I think. Yeah. I, I dig the look, but uh, as far as functionality, <laughs> and, and then the fit is, is not good at all, unless uh, some crazy way this ain't for an S10. Maybe brand new window rubber. Might, be, might a, be a little, a little, tighter. little tighter. Yeah, a little tighter tolerance, but other than that, it's not exactly the same. It does look awesome, though. Especially when it's down. Yeah. This is not the cool. We're going to have to run an extension cord and a battery charger, an AC converter, all to have us. Long ass extension cord to be able to cruise around and do this. <laughs> we'll just stop places and plug in, roll the window down, roll it up. It's raining. Boom. Nice. That is cool. <laughs> here, get in here. <laughs> it's kind of like a selfie. Right. What's up? <laughs> or was I recording? Nope. Um, I think I would definitely try. Yeah, for sure. Some rope. <clears throat> or something in it. I don't even know how you get it out of the bottom though. It's completely covered. Unless, like you were, wait. I don't know. Well, the way we did that windshield, you just pull it and then you pull it through. Well, I know, but there's nowhere to pull it at the bottom. Mm. You can only pull it around to so far. Well, you set in the underneath of it, maybe. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to start to pull your pieces under here? Yeah, that's tough. But yeah, new rubber. Or we just need it around up here, up the top, because the corners is where we had the biggest trouble. It just didn't seal as tight as you want. But we're just the assuming the bottom seals right. 
True. <laughs> I mean, it usually does, but I still always have to go along and run to, to release that bottom seal to get it to lay all the way down. But if it was laying down further, you'd have more of a gap. That's true. So it, it's got to be seated, right? It felt like it sat right on it, and right, then we right. just were slicing it back in there. All right. That was part of the wiring. Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing this in the GT. I'd have been fucking freaking. I bet. And none of this is good enough to protect paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you would lose sleep. Turn it on yet? Okay. Okay, we're doing a test here. I'll plug this bad boy in. You just need to hear a click, or, or are you looking for voltage? Uh, I'm looking for voltage, but when you turn it on, nothing's going to happen. I hit this. It gives me 12 volt. I hit it. It gives me negative, negative 12, 12 volts. So we're good. Yeah, see, look, if you can see it. So you got hit it. We got 12 volt. And then we hit the other side of it. It gives negative. It's exactly what it should do. We're using a two relay setup. Here's the motor output. Long video on there. We'll put a link in the uh, description here so you can see what it does. But basically, we're going to be using this switch. Which is a four wheel drive switch, stock factory four wheel drive switch. We're just using it for a ground switch, actually. The center is going to be body ground or whatever. The out two are grounded to the relays. Um, I'll show you kind of here the way that we have these relays. And, and you, you, you need to go watch a video that's way better than us at, at doing this. We just I just want you to see how it's done. This is going to be our positives. All these are going to run the positive to a positive in the truck. These are going to go to a negative in the truck. These two wires down here are going to run back to the motor. And it is a positive and a negative. And what they do when you hit that switch is these are flip-flopping. It is reversing the polarity. So this one becomes a positive and this one becomes a negative to run it down and vice versa to run it up. Whole lot of explaining. I'm not an electrician. Look that shit up. These are double throw, double pull relays. Correct. And yeah. again, there's lots of good videos on there on how to wire this. He got these pre-wired harnesses, which make life a lot easier. So we would definitely recommend those. Yeah, if something does happen to these relay, you're just going to unplug it like that and replace that part there your, your wiring still all done so we're going to put this in there and test it hopefully it works uh, let's bring this around here a little closer and uh, here goes nothing ready oh that went down hey. nice <laughs> Do it again. What are you doing? Go ahead. You, you can do it this time. Do you remember which one it was? There you go. Do her, Jeff. Green is up. That makes sense. Okay, perfect. And then orange is down. Nice. That works great, dude. You just have perfect. to watch it when you do it so you don't break it. Yeah. Your game. Booyah. So we got her all in. Still not real, real impressed with the with the overall fit, but we're gonna maybe try a new rubber seal sometime. That was a pain in the butt to get in there. Um can't really show you back in here. I don't have the panels back in, so you can kind of see. There's the gear. There's a the little piece of it. <laughs> but what we did was I ran a factory four-wheel drive switch here. Up is up, down is down. Turn the key on. I'm going to flip my camera. See behind me. Down is down. And it quit working already. This thing is super temperamental. <laughs> You don't want it to go down too far. So I'm not going to watch in the mirror when I do this. I'm going to turn my head back around. But it, it, it goes back up. And I think it's still pretty decent on that time, maybe. Yep, so there it is, guys. Is it perfect? Nope. <laughs> Did we do lots of things wrong? Probably. But it's in there, and I'm satisfied. You don't see too many of these around, so we are happy. So there you have it, the CR Lawrence Power Light Limo window. CR Lawrence made several different windows, and I believe they're still in business as a glass company, and probably aftermarket power windows or some sort of thing like that. Um, I do also have the power slider that will eventually go in the ST, but we've been wanting this thing 
in here for a long time and I've never seen an S10. I don't even think I've ever seen a mini truck with one of these windows. Um, back in the 90s, I used to see them all the time on full size Chevys. Pretty much that was it. So I've been chomping at the bit to get this thing in here and so happy that Jeff came down and helped me out with all this. And I don't think it gets any cooler. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Keep on trucking. I'm Jeff and this has been Hardcore Garage. <laughs>